So let's have some fun. I have noticed that there are very few videos where someone explains how the results from WinISD apply to real life. So here is my take on it. Uh, keep in mind that this video is mainly made for fun and the methods I use are far from serious and accurate. So let us look at the software results. You can see here uh, this is the transfer function for my sixth order bandpass subwoofer. I have a separate video uh, where I show how I built it. Uh, we can see that uh, the minus 3 dB is somewhere around uh, 26 Hz and the passband goes somewhere around uh, 115 Hz at minus 3 dB. Uh, here is a distinct peak at 80 Hz. All the tests that uh, I will show you now are carried out at uh, somewhere around 300 watts, probably less. Here you can see the cone excursion graph. Note that the two dips, one is around 31-32 Hz and the other one is uh, around 73-74 uh, to 74 Hz. Note as well the steep climb of excursion below 30 Hz. So, this is the uh, air velocity graph for the high tuned port. You, you can see that uh, the peak air velocity is at uh, 79 to 80 Hz, somewhere around there. Uh, we can take another look at the cone excursion graph and you can see how little the cone moves uh, at that frequency where the air veloci velocity is such great number. Here is air velocity for low tune port. We peak around 31 Hz. Again, this is near the lower minimum for the uh, excursion as it can be seen here. For both air velocity graphs we can see that there are frequencies where there is no air moving in any of the ports and also there are frequencies where uh, the air is moving in both ports. For example when you look at the high tune port we can see that the minimum air velocity is only around 3 meters per second at 31 Hz and uh, for the low tuned port uh, there is basically no air moving uh, when playing frequencies from 60 Hz and up it can uh, be seen that uh, just below the tuned frequency for the high port there is also a distinct minimum of air movement. So let's go through some videos I filmed before and let's start with the 20 Hz test. You can see that both ports move air but not that much. Also we are at almost peak uh, cone excursion. It can be seen well, the cone excursion can be seen here, so this is uh, somewhere around 20 Hz and we are moving around uh, 45 millimeters. And uh, the air is also moving both in uh, the high tune port and the low tune port. To be, to be honest, I think that the value is pretty much the same for, the bo for both ports around 10 meters per second. So now the next clip, 26 Hz, 
uh, this was the lowest audible frequency um, yeah so uh, the values are pretty much average uh, for the uh, cone excursion for uh, high tune port and for low tune port as well at uh, 30 hertz we have maximum airflow which can be seen both in video here for the low tune port and uh, in the graph as you can see here we have a 21 meters per second for 31 hertz and it can be seen that the uh, high tuned port has almost no air moving in it so it's a distinct dip in the air velocity here at uh, 35 hertz the base had the uh, most apparent power for the year. Uh, it can be seen that both ports load the speaker and air moves in both of them. Also, it is represented in the graph where both in high tune port and uh, low tune port there is some air movement. So now things got a little bit weird, at uh, around 51 Hz I had an audible peak uh, which is probably due to some room gain and uh, reflections from the walls because in the graph, in the transfer function you can see that uh, it has almost a dip at this area but uh, it was not present in real life measurements and listening so at 80 hertz uh, there is the maximum high port air velocity uh, which could be seen in the video here and uh, also when we look we can see here the maximum air velocity in the high tune port as well in the graph. Um, when we look at the low tune port, we can see that basically there is no air moving in it, which could be seen also in the video. And uh, just for fun, let's look at the whole sweep once more again. So, you might ask uh, why, why this is important, why should, uh, why should anyone put some papers in front of their ports? Uh, yeah, that's a great question, I don't know either <laughs> why this is important, but uh, I guess it's a little bit fun to put some papers in your subwoofer port and uh, also this helps to validate your box and to check your results with the uh, modeling software predictions um, it can help uh, improve the design for the future projects and future boxes uh, for example when designing the subwoofer I had uh, this box in mind You can see that uh, after adding some polyfill for the real life box, we gained some virtual volume for the low tuned uh, section of the box. And uh, also, this helped to 
uh, increase the uh, overall output as well. Also, there is a distinct peak in uh, higher frequencies when comparing to um, original planned box, uh, which is caused partly uh, due higher tuning and uh, the port has really high Q. Um, well, basically, it works too good, <laughs> so it became a little bit peaky. But uh, uh, I will be able to improve on these two things in my future boxes. So, at the moment, I guess that's it. Uh, thank you for watching, and um, please consider subscribing and then uh, pressing that like button I guess <laughs> it really helps me a lot and um, stay tuned till the next video thanks <laughs>